After two weeks exploring the land of the rising sun, it's finally time to head to the capital. And after a short train ride downhill from Mount Fuji, we arrive in the biggest city on planet Earth. Welcome to the largest, busiest, and arguably craziest city in the world. Tokyo is gargantuan. And with almost 40 million people squeezed into its metropolitan area, it's truly like no other city on Earth. Every bit of space and real estate in Tokyo seems like it's been taken and on first impressions, it genuinely feels like every part of this modern metropolis is bursting at the seams. Walking around this buzzing capital, it's hard to imagine that Japan's actually in the midst of a demographic crisis that could cause all of that to change. But that's something we're going to explore later in the video. For now, on our last day together with the group, we really wanted to try and get a grasp on the scale of this metropolis of almost 40 million people. So, we headed straight to the highest point in Shinjuku to take a look over the never-ending cityscape. Tokyo is the biggest city in the world. And it genuinely looks like it's never-ending. It's quite hard to comprehend how giant it is. I mean... 40 million people live in the metropolitan area of Tokyo it is literally like the size of bigger than most European countries, right? It's just nuts. You really can't comprehend it, to be honest. It makes me feel a bit queasy. <laughs> Being up here does. <laughs> <laughs> We're going for a bit of a walk around, and then later on this evening, we're going for the last supper. And karaoke. <laughs> and karaoke. <laughs> yeah, so we've been warming up our falsetto all day. And I'm feeling confident. I think I might go for a Whitney number, personally. I've got it in me. It's our last night together with the group we've been touring Japan with, and we are spending it in an isekaya, with the most amazing view, eating incredible local and not so local foods, and reminiscing on an incredible trip, before taking a walk through nighttime Tokyo, and, of course, in true Tokyo style, heading to a karaoke booth. And then, it was time to say goodbye, which, to be honest, we are never too good at filming, as the emotions usually take over. Okay, we need to touch on something. We're all a little bit tired of hearing about it, but last year, in every single country we travelled to, we saw record inflation. And Japan is absolutely no different, and inflation levels here have actually hit a 41-year high. That's absolutely the same as back home in the UK, as well as in the US. And it's crazy. It seems that prices are skyrocketing for both locals and tourists everywhere in the world. For us personally, we've always wanted to make sure that our money is sitting, not just depreciating in a bank, but working for us somewhere else and it turns out a ton of our subscribers are also doing the same thing with masterworks in the last year alone whilst our economies were turning themselves upside down inflation was sending our grocery budgets skyrocketing and pensions in the US alone fell by over 20% masterworks actually paid out over 25 million dollars to those lucky investors they achieved this by giving access to almost anyone to one of the hottest alternatives on the market contemporary fine art in the last year, by the way, art prices rose an average of 29% at auction. For perspective, the entire S&P 500 dropped by an overall of 20% last year. Over 680,000 people have signed up to Masterworks so far, and with so many of our subscribers joining, Masterworks are now offering special access to skip the waitlist for all of our subscribers. If this is something you're interested in too, then click the link in the description box below, and now, I'm not really sure where we are, but this is definitely not Tokyo, so um, let's head back there. 
Good morning from Tokyo. We're waking up together with the city today and I suggest we head to the fish market which is located literally across the whole city. It will take about an hour to get there but we're so excited to eat through the whole market so let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Navigating the underground system in Tokyo has not been simple. Kyoto has been a piece of cake. Everything is pretty straightforward, you know, very simple. But I'm sure the Tokyo underground system makes sense, but it's not quite obvious when you are not local. It's definitely been uh, interesting. <laughs> Got lost a few times, took you on trains and stations, but you know. Yeah, fish cake, I guess. Yeah. Try it. I mean, you've already I tried did. it, but try it on camera. Hmm. Squidge it. Hmm. Mm. There's some cabbage in there. Yeah, the cabbage is really nice. Mm, see the big bit of octopus here? Yeah. Beautiful. Good little snack it's to quite keep sweet, going. yeah. It is sweet. sweet, yeah. It's not very fishy. And the ginger's not too strong, right? It's just a slight mm -hmm. kick to it. Yeah. market was actually insane and some queues were that long that you weren't allowed to queue anymore it all got a bit much for us so we went upstairs into the food court part and ordered ourselves some food Matt ordered a curry and I ordered a set of fresh tempura I mean some people would call it a disaster I would call it an experience <laughs> I mean it looks good it does I don't think it's a disaster at all. I don't know why. I expected the market to be different. But we were talking about it with you. For some reason, I expected it to be some sort of a wet market with, you know, locals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Squid. Oh, 
it's not chewy at all. Just fills the butt in your mouth. So good. Really hot. So flaky. Mm. Mm. The butter is so light and gentle. Yeah, that's a squid, isn't it? That is so, so nice. I was going to say sorry, Britain, but that's better than fish and chips. <laughs> what a surprise! What a shock! <laughs> The time has come. I've been walking around the whole market with this mochi and everyone's been asking me where to buy them from. I think I've been the best advertisement of the, this mochi. <laughs> we should have been paid to eat them. I know. <laughs> Which one shall we go first? Can you remember what one's what? It will be a surprise. <laughs> I mean, I love mochi, but it's a very, um, what do you say, quite a stodgy consistency. I don't think the texture of it is for everyone because it's quite gloopy in a way. Yeah, it's very interesting. I didn't expect it to be a um, red bean paste, but it's essentially a rice cake with some filling inside. And you know what? Fresh fruit goes perfectly with it. It just cuts through this texture and lift it up I thought it would be One of the first things we notice walking around the city, and it's hard not to miss, is on every single street corner there's a vending machine, sometimes three or four next to one another. And they sell everything from hot drinks to food. And we're reading about the vending machines here in Tokyo. And what's really interesting is the reason there is so many is because in a city of 37 million people, as you can imagine, space is of the essence. So these were put in and people buy them as a franchise in order to make money as opposed to shops because the rent for shops and for space is so expensive here in the city. Get yourself a vending machine that just takes a little bit of space and can earn you some money on the side. is a great investment for a lot of people here in Tokyo. Interesting. Actually, on that note, regarding the vending machines, they're actually one of the only places in the entire city where you'll see bins. There's no bins in the streets here in Tokyo as opposed to certainly European cities but what's interesting is there is no rubbish anywhere and that's been the same throughout the whole of Japan. Since being here it's been really interesting to watch people as they finish their drinks for example and instead of looking around slyly like people may do at home and lobbing it in a street corner people pack up their rubbish after them and take them until they find a bin which is either next to one of the vending machines or in like a 7-eleven or anything like that. on the subject of the space again in Japan we've seen this tiny space saving cars that seem to exist only in Japan they're so funny looking but at the same time quite a cool I would love to have one yeah they're really practical as well right in a city like this they're so practical and you see them parked in the garages so tightly yeah and they just jut out like yeah. finish right on the road <laughs> hello he doesn't like them <laughs> Oh, down, lads. Um, they look like little loaves of bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japanese buhankas.
So we're walking through one of the main business districts here in Tokyo at the moment. And for those of you who didn't know, Japan is the world's third biggest economy. And for a country with a population of only 125 million, that's quite some feat. And in order to retain that status and to keep the economy growing, the people here in Japan need to work an awful, awful lot. Japan's known around the world for their incredibly long working hours. And there's actually a saying for the people that work the long office hours here in Japan, and they are salary men. And here in Tokyo, especially, it's no surprise to see office lights glaring until eight, nine, 10 at night. And actually there's a culture here in Japan that you don't leave before the boss leaves. So if the boss stays in the office, a lot of the workers or nearly all of the workers will sit in the office with him, even if they finish their job. This is Akihabara, a mecca for gamers and anime lovers from around the world. It could well be the busiest place in Japan and is absolutely buzzing with shops, arcades and flashing lights. Akihabara with you, most famous gaming area in Tokyo. Let's head back to our hood where we're staying. An area is called Shinjuku. Heading back across Tokyo on the metro, something struck us. It's so silent. As opposed to our cultures, here in Japan, the metro is a place for complete silence. And even to catch up on some lost sleep after a long day's work. kicking in I really want to see the whole city but we've been out all day literally from 8 and it's getting I think to 5 in the evening and we've only seen like two areas so it's physically impossible unfortunately it takes quite a lot of time to get from A to B so I guess I just need to chill and we have to come back to Tokyo but you know what's really fascinating is how actually huge the city is it's really hard for me to actually fathom that and the amount of people that live here. And what is interesting is that Japan actually has a falling population. The population of Japan is aging and there are more older people than younger. And by the year of 2050, the population is supposed to drop by about 30 million, I think. I wonder what will happen with all these properties and apartments and all this space and all of it, you know? This is a conversation we've been having sporadically like all day, isn't it? Where we've been walking around and yeah. yeah, it's it's something that's really interesting because the city is so busy, so packed in and Japan in general, everywhere we've been so far has been really busy, right? With tourists and from internal tourists, you know, Japanese tourists yeah. as well as residents. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting problem that the Japanese people have to adapt to. Um, fascinating, yeah, how the economy is going to adapt, how life's going to adapt, how property prices, like you said, are going to adapt. Uh, if you're investing in a property at the moment in Tokyo, I'm sure it's like the prices are sky high, right? Because as we mentioned about even like vending machines, any bit yeah. of land, any bit of real, real estate is sought after. But is that going to change going forward? I'm sure they're that clever. They will come up with a solution. I'm sure they'll do something because honestly, so Japan seems... 
Japan is so unique and it's definitely so unlike anywhere. There are so many unique and quirky things to this country that just baffles you and everything seems to be for your convenience and there are little tiny details and everything is just so thoughtful and we notice that people take their jobs no matter what they're doing they're taking their jobs very serious and they're proud of what they're doing no matter what it is and they're giving it their hundred percent I don't know whether it's a good or a bad thing but that's just the way it is it's definitely an enigma as well there is a lot of things mixed in that contradict each other but I think it's like that it's actually the same as pretty much anywhere but yeah I'm just after being here for over two weeks I feel like we've learned a lot and I got to know the culture and the people way better than we did before and the food obviously <laughs> but um, it's crazy in a way for me it's it's mental and I'm not a fan of crowds but in a way Japan and Tokyo itself is so addictive I feel like I don't want to leave and I feel like I will crave it and I will miss this place and I will want to come back also on the the thing of the crowds it's incredibly crowded but things are very ordered as well right when you're in the metro it looks like chaos yeah. right there's so many people but then you look closely and you realize that everyone's queuing up everyone lets the other people off first then they move on nobody it's talks so on the quiet. metro as mm -hmm. we mentioned everything's ordered so in that way it doesn't seem as chaotic as maybe you yeah. would imagine in the first place and also going back to the falling population i think it may be in the generation of automation and the fact that japan in general has always over the past 30 40 years been at the forefront of any technological advances mm. you really wouldn't put it past them to adapt <laughs> to whatever challenges robots. ahead <laughs> yeah, yeah well yeah i mean <laughs> no it's just fascinating it's just very interesting place to be yeah really interesting place to watch but yeah i think tokyo is one of my favorite cities in the world and i can't wait to be back and i explore agree more. and i think we weren't really expecting that were we no i didn't expect to like it i thought it's no. gonna be too much Me i thought too. it's good i was so. looking forward to experiencing it and seeing it but i thought nice i don't know <laughs> three or four good. days is gonna be enough yeah but yeah. No, definitely not. I totally agree. No. It feels like there's so much more to see and do, yeah. and you can literally turn down any street corner and, there and there's something, something else. going on. Yeah. There is something going on the majority of the time that's something that you want to get involved in. <laughs> Amazing. AKA food. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks so much for watching this video and see you next one. By the way, don't forget to check out Masterworks using the link in the description box below. Thanks again for watching this Japan series and uh, see you in the next one.